Hi and welcome to this On Maths update. We're going to discuss what topics are likely to come up in the paper 2 uh, for the Edexcel Higher uh, GCSE in Maths on Friday. Enjoy! Hi and welcome to this On Maths update. Um, so I've looked at the today's paper and analysed it, cut off all the topics that have come up, things like well, whatever came up in today's paper, I'm not going to list them out. However, what I am going to list out is what's likely to come up on paper two on Friday. Okay, so the main two, or the main two obviously normally come up on the calculator, are Pythagoras a little bit, you know, C grades, not, not that difficult, most higher people know it. If you don't know it, revise it. But trigonometry, trigonometry almost certainly will be there. It could be the sine cosine ratio as well. Uh, sine cosine rule as well, uh, area of a triangle using trig, things like that. Um, but for a B grade you need to be absolutely sure of your Sokotoa, okay? Um, interior and exterior angles, uh, a few angles came up, but interior and exterior angles of a polygon, uh, so don't forget that the exterior angles all add up to 360, uh, and then remember the formula for the interior angles. Um, loci didn't come up at all, in fact there wasn't really any construction um, so you didn't have to draw um, whatever perpendicular bisector. Don't forget to leave your arc lines with your compass. The big one, big calculator one, try and improvement. Make sure you're happy with where the marks are for try and improvement. If you are asked for one decimal place, if it's between 3.4 and 3.5, don't forget to do 3.45. Do the halfway point to see which one of those it is. Okay. Uh, sectors, arcs, circles, make sure you understand uh, that area of a circle is pi r squared, circumference is pi d, but also remember that if you've got uh, a little bit of a circle and the angle is, I don't know, 20 degrees, then you do 20 over 360, because that's the fraction that it is, then times it by pi r squared or pi d, whichever you're asked for, either the sector area or the arc length. Um, prime factors, highest common factor, uh, highest common factor, lowest common multiple. Okay, uh, obviously those didn't come up, so just make sure you understand those. Uh, prime factors are the one where if you have sixty, then it, you split it up two and thirty, then you split thirty up into two and fifteen, and then fifteen up into three and five. Don't forget the product means you put times between each one. If it says it in index form, you do two cubed instead of two times two times two. Um, lowest common multiple, first number in, in both the times tables. So write the times tables out as the first number in both. Highest common factor, obviously, is that you split the number up. So 12 becomes 1 times 12, and 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. And you do that for both of them, and it's the highest number in both those lists. Tree diagrams. Um, did, uh, there was a probability, conditional probability question, but there might be an independent probability question based on a tree diagram. So make sure you understand that both of them have to add up to one at each each branch. Okay. Uh, nth term sequences. Uh, sequ basic sequences came up on foundation, but I think there might be an nth term maybe on this paper. Um, also, uh, stem and leaf diagrams didn't come up. Um, there was quite a bit of data on this uh, exam, but there's normally a bit of data on both. So scatter diagrams or scatter graphs probably will come up. Remember, when you see a scatter graph, the first thing you do is do a line of best fit. Don't even see whether it asks you to do it. Just draw your line of best fit. You won't ever lose marks for doing it. However, you're probably going to get marks, not necessarily for A, but for question B or C. It says, if someone got 30 on the maths exam, what are they likely to get on the physics exam? So you draw a line up from 30 and across. Or you look at the number here, depending on what they're asking. If they're saying the physics exam across and down, where it hits the line of best fit. And don't be too fussy about where the line of best fit is. Okay, uh, they, they, No one's going to count the fact that you've got exactly the same amount top and bottom. Okay, They normally give you quite a uh, large leeway on it. If it goes up, it's positive. If it goes down, it's negative. Okay. If it's positive, then as this increases, then this one increases. I have no idea whether I'm doing this the right way, but I'm hoping I am. Circle theorems didn't come up at all, um, so make sure you understand your circle theorems. Uh, angle at centre is twice the angle at the circumference. 
uh, angles in a semicircle are 90 degrees, uh, angles of the same chord are equal, etc. etc. Uh, the posh one, alternate segment theorem, make sure you understand that if you want to try and get A, all the other ones are sort of B grade. Uh, cyclic quadrilaterals, they, they sometimes like those ones. So where you've got a quadrilateral in the shape, so a four-sided shape in the, cir in the circle, and each corner is touching the circle, opposites add up to 180. Okay? Um, there wasn't any expanding or factorising, um, so there's probably going to be a mega question on expanding, factorising and solving. There was a bit of solving, um, but there might be more on solving. You might need to solve a bracketed one, so you know I need to expand it and solve it or something like that. Uh, factorising, I'd expect there to be a quadratic one, maybe using the quadratic formula, maybe using factorising. Um, we had a few shapes on the first paper, but we didn't see a cone or a pyramid, so make sure you understand those. Limits of accuracy is an interesting one. It will say, um, why isn't, or what's the minimum this could be? And there won't be any indication, apart from the fact they'll tell you what the units are rounded to. So it's 23 centimetres to the nearest centimetre. Well, then that's the limit of accuracy, and you obviously take away 0.5 and add 0.5 for the lower and upper bound. Make sure you're happy with that. Uh, vectors didn't come up at all, uh, so that would probably be a good one to revise. And graphic transformations, the f of x and all that business, um, will, one of those will come up maybe, vectors or graphic transformations. Um, cumulative frequency didn't come up as well. They had box plots but it didn't have cumulative frequency, so it could be a big cumulative frequency question. There are um, a few more bits and bobs. Those are the main ones that I've picked up that are likely to come up. Um, algebraic fractions uh, didn't come up. Uh, direct proportion, although inverse did, so that's unlikely to come up. Um, ooh, let's have a look. Is there anything else? Area of a trapezium. Um, uh, compound interest, so make sure you understand compound interest. Uh, reverse percentages as well. Um, and I think I think those are the main ones. So if you have only a limited time um, and you're looking for a C grade or a low B grade somewhere in that region, I would focus on uh, try and improvement Pythagoras scat diagrams. Make sure you're happy with those expanding and factorizing. If you're looking for a B grade, focus on trig. Make sure you're happy with Sokoto all that business. Um, and that should should be, hopefully you've got everything else in order, and cumulative frequency as well if you're looking for a B grade. If you're looking for A grades, and you're focusing on graphic transformation vectors, uh, limits of accuracy, uh, which is the upper and lower bound, and sectors, uh, areas of sectors, and length of arc. I hope this has been helpful. It's <laughs> It's been a long day, so I apologise about the... Uh, lack of production quality on this video. There's no graphic there, for instance. Uh, and I think the background, the, the screen screen behind me is a bit dodgy. But I hope you can forgive that, and I hope this has been useful. Thank you very much.